Dr. Meredith Travelstad is here now from Baptist for Women, and we're talking about human papillomavirus. And if you have questions, you can send them to the doctors at WLBT.com. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we were just talking, uh, you and Barbie share a very special bond. You delivered all of her babies. All of my babies. And got me through a really difficult time when, when we lost one. So yes. I love Dr. Travelstead. Well, it is awesome to have you here with us. We're talking about the human papillomavirus. What is HPV? Well, HPV is a viral infection, a virus that causes um, cervical cancer and um, genital warts. It's actually the most common uh, sexually transmitted virus that we see. Amazing. And so sexually transmitted, that's the only way that you can get the HPV? Well, any sexual contact and any skin-to-skin -skin contact. So it has to be by skin-to-skin. -skin. You can actually contract it um, that way, some people have questions about use of condoms for protection, but um, that's not 100% because you ha can have it from skin to skin contact. You won't get it from inanimate objects, to, you know, touching okay, things, right. but skin to skin contact. How common is HPV? It sounds like it's pretty common. It's actually very common. 80% of the population will have an HPV infection by the time they're 50. Most of those infections are between 15, age 15 and 25, but um, it's very common. About 40% of people walking around right now have That's HPV scary. infection. That is scary. They're usually asymptomatic infections. Usually you don't have signs or symptoms of it and don't even know you have it. And it's often self-limited. So you will have it resolved within usually about two years at the most. Now, I know there's a vaccine and there's been a lot of debate about young girls getting the vaccine. What do you think and how old should they be, uh, especially with it being, you know, this common and this many people being uh, affected by it? Um, well, as we discussed, it is so common, so we do recommend the vaccine. It's our first line of defense because it is a viral infection and you can't just take antibiotics like a bacterial infection and get rid of it. So your immune system has to fight it out. So we recommend the vaccine. It's uh, three shots um, given in about a six month time period. There are two vaccines. You can talk to your doctor about which one uh, they would recommend. But young girls are um, usually getting it around age 11 or 12, but the, the time frame to get it is between ages nine to 26. So um, I would recommend it, and, and the best time to get it is before you get an HPV infection. So we do recommend it before you're exposed, so that's why they're, they're actually giving it to young girls. Okay, so if you're in your 30s, your 40s, 50s, and older, um, you do or you do not recommend getting it at that point? Well, that's when your risk for HPV infection goes down okay. because of your exposure and your right. risk factors. Um, you can get HPV infection at those ages, but the vaccine is indicated and, and covered, you know, by payers for ages 9 to 26. Now, when you get other STDs, um, I guess some of them really never go away. I don't know if it's syphilis or gonorrhea or, or all of them that really never go away. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Right. How is this one, is this one similar to that? I mean, can you get rid of HPV after you get it? You know, it is, it's a great question and a lot of people have that question. It, com it comes and goes, you can have it flare up and, and it, since it is a viral infection, you can develop immune response to it and may never have other um, manifestations of it again. However, I kind of compare it to a cold sore. You know, that's a herpes virus and you have some patients that have a cold sore and it comes up and they have it one time and they never have it again. And then you have some that have recurrence of that cold sore and they get it whenever they get stressed or in the sunlight. And so this is similar also. We don't know why, but for some, it can be a recurrent infection that can come back. Now, I'm just sitting here thinking about parents out there. When my daughter was 11, I didn't have to worry about this. I'm right. just thinking about all those parents that we've gotten to the day now that you have to worry about giving your 11-year-old a vaccine to right. prevent a sexually transmitted disease. Right. That's, that's really frightening to me. I think because we've discovered how common it is and the tie to cervical cancer um, that we have urged um, patients to go ahead and get their children vaccinated early because it is just, you know, 80, when you say 80% of the population at some time has it. And, you know, a small percentage of those will actually be by cancer causing HPV viral types. There are 100 mm -hmm. types of viral types um, of HPV viral types that can cause uh, infection, but only a small percentage will actually cause cervical cancer. 
Okay, so I'll get a little personal with you. Um, I've got two daughters. I'm going to teach them abstinence. And, and though they may reach that point until they get married, what about if they marry someone who was not abstinent? Exactly. So do you still suggest, even with somebody like me, who's trying yeah. to teach their children to be abstinent, that it's still worth getting? I really think it is, and that's a, a great way to, to explain it, is you want your children to be abstinent to a certain um, point and before marriage, but you never know the life situations. You know, they marry someone who's been married before, or they marry someone who's lost a spouse, and um, you never know what experiences they have and what exposures they have. It just protects them because it can affect um, the cervix and procedures you have to have done, which can affect um, future pregnancies. And so there's a lot to consider with cervical cancer and, and precancerous cells. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Awesome information and giving us a lot to think about. Again, thanks to Dr. Meredith Travelstead. You were awesome. Thank you thank for being you. here. And of course, she's with Baptist for Women. And for more health news anytime, you can always go to our website, WLBT.com, and click on Medical Matters.